you very much, our two uh, MCs. They are actually also from the ICE, huh? so they are ICE engineers. Assalamu alaikum, very good evening. Salam satu Malaysia. <coughs> Yang berhormat Dato IR Haji Hamim Samuri, Deputy Minister of uh, Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Yang berusaha Dato Majid Kutiran, Pengarah Kanan MITI. Yang berusaha Encik Johan Mahmud Merikan, Chief Executive Officer of Telengkop Malaysia. Yang berusaha Encik Lukman Ahmad, Deputy Director of Human Capital Development EPU. Yang berusaha Encik Zainal Abidin, Executive, Executive Director of uh, Peradua. Yang berusaha Puan Wahida, Pengarah Kanan uh, of uh, Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Captains of the Industries. The ICE engineers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. A very warm welcome to all of you to our event this evening to, comm to commemorate the graduation of our engineers who had participated in our training program recognized as the Automotive Industry Certification Engineering or ICE. First and foremost, Allow me to extend our special thanks and our appreciation to Yang Berhormat I.R. Haji Hamim Samuri for taking his time to be with us today. We would like also to extend our appreciation to EPU as well as to Telencorp and in particular to Inchek Lukman and also Inchek Johan for being with us today and especially for their continuous support for the ICE uh, program. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present a short brief on the background of this program, which was introduced way back in August last year. The program was mooted out of the industry feedback on various teething problems the industry encountered when employing newly graduated engineers, albeit graduated from local universities or even abroad. Most glaring of all is, despite having high academic knowledge, most of the graduate engineers lack self-confidence and many other soft skills required of them to be able to quickly adapt themselves in their respective workplaces. Although the usual excuse given is the inability of these graduates, especially the locals, to communicate well in English, but the problem remains even if they are employed and are working in companies where the spoken language is in BM. This has led us to conclude that it is not just their inability to communicate in English as the sole barrier, but you know, lacking in soft skills, uncultured working attitudes, as well as inability to adapt to a new working environment is actually the reality from befronting all of them. This inability to quickly adapt to the workplace has led to many intermigration of newly graduated engineers hopping from one job to the other until they finally found the most suitable company or the right engineering field to remain employed for a longer period. The phenomenon has the setbacks to both the graduates as well as the employers alike. While hoping between jobs, the graduates simply deprive themselves from acquiring job skills that ensures an early start in their engineering career for their long-term employment. In most engineering skills, Particularly in automotive manufacturing, an engineer may require at least five years to acquire sufficient exposure and skills to perform well in any particular engineering undertaking, and as such, job hopping retards early skill development of most of our graduate engineers. On the part of the em employers, they are very much discouraged from putting much effort to train the graduate engineers due to the uncertainty of retaining the engineers. So although the industry do welcome undergraduate students to undergo their short-term industrial training, prerequisite to their undergraduate studies, however, the exercise is merely serving a social obligation and the training are usually uncoordinated, leaving the trainees roaming around the shop floor trying to learn whatever they can. Ladies and gentlemen, my has since realized the importance of creating some kind of a post-employment training program for 
those graduate engineers interested to enter the auto employment market. Apart from imparting the required soft skills and all the qualities required for the graduate engineers to adapt to the auto manufacturing and engineering, the engineers were also equipped with knowledge on many important industrial practices such as quality management, lean production system, design engineering, and this is to name a few, which these subjects were given less attention during their academic studies. These soft skills were extensively introduced for a period of two months during the ICE training and the remaining 10 months. The graduate engineers will be stationed and working full time at the company, which will eventually employ them upon their graduation. Ladies and gentlemen, automotive industry is fast moving towards liberalization and more so when the ASEAN Economic Community Treaty is implemented due in 2015. In this borderless setup, competitiveness is key for that our local auto manufacturers, vendors and OEM alike. To survive and to succeed in capturing the bigger market potential the treaty has to offer. The most critical competitive kit for this opportunity is the strength of our human capital. My perceives this seriously and efforts were met to further enhance all level of auto workforce in our preparation to face these new forthcoming challenges. Some of the human capital development programs that have been implemented and are still ongoing includes the Graduate Apprenticeship Program, the Industry-Led Professional Certification Program, or IPC. Please do visit our web website for details of these programs that MAI has to offer. I must categori categorically state here that these programs we develop in full consultation with the industry to ensure their relevance. And further, the programs were customized with the eventual objective of creating a trained, cultured, and well-connected Malaysian automotive industrial community of the future. Now, before I end my speech, allow me once again to express my sincere thanks to Yang Bohormat IR Haji Hamim Samuri for being with us today, and also our appreciation again to our special guest from Talent Corp, Mr. Johan, from EPU, Mr. Lukman, and really, you know, without your continuous support, we don't think that we could have succeeded in carrying out this program. So, for that, thank you very much. And also, yeah. And also, we would like to thank, you know, personally the industry players that had participated with us along this one year, you know, because this, this program is not only funded by government, it's a government industry funded program. Industry players who received the ICE engineers also contributed in the training program as well as in actually giving allowances to the student or to the engineers along one year of this program. So it's really a joint program between government and industry player. So thank you, big clap to our industry captains who are with us today. And last but not least, to all of you ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for being with us tonight and have a very good evening. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum, uh, good evening. YB Datuk Hamim Samuri, Deputy Minister of MITI, Encik Mohamad Madani Sahari, CEO of MAI, Datuk Majid from MITI, my colleague Encik Lukman from EPU. Um, distinguished la ladies and gentlemen, but obviously most importantly, all the graduates of the ICE program, tonight is your evening. But before I, I, while I'm on this rostrum, let me first start, first and foremost, uh, to thank um, YB Dato Hamin Samuri for gracing our event uh, tonight and to make sure it is a more meaningful uh, graduation for all our ICE uh, trainees. For tonight really belongs to all of you. There were 254 graduate engineers who have undergone the ICE program since its launch in August 2012 and are now uh, at least most of them, at least 200, are employed by the automotive vendor community. And we are confident that those remaining will be also absorbed by the industry in due course. And in that respect, I must commend the MAI for their efforts in successfully implementing this program. <laughs> uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, perhaps I should put in context in terms of the respective organizations that I think are present here today because the ICE program at the end of the day is a partnership and it involves various parties who are, I think, all instrumental in ensuring the successful implementation of this program. You have tonight, obviously, METI, uh, EPU, uh, Talent Corporation, and definitely a very key role as well, the industry members who have participated in this program. In terms of context, Malaysia is heading towards Vision 2020, developed nation status. In driving towards developed nation status, we need economic growth, and a key component of that is sustained investment growth. And that's where METI comes in, in terms of ensuring that our core industries, and automotive is obviously a key part of that, continues to, be sus to sustain in terms of strong investment growth to ensure that we then have opportunities, particularly job opportunities for our Malaysians. Because at the end of the day, the ETP, although it's probably best, best well known for the target of achieving a 15,000 USD per capita GNI by 2020, at the end of the day, our economic transformation for Malaysia is not just about trying to achieve some abstract economic statistic, it is about ensuring that our Malaysians, particularly the youth of Malaysia, will achieve a high income, sustainable and also inclusive future for all of, all of them. Now with the investments, and the, generally, as I think Jamadani has already set out, with the investments, a key enabler in terms of ensuring that we continue in our transformation and that we can able to sustain the investment growth, the key ingredient in terms of a factor of production, if you may, is really the supply of talent. And this is one area that continues to be a challenge for many employers in terms of sustaining their transformation towards higher value added activities and also to sustain expansion of their businesses. And to this respect, this is where we want to ensure that we are able to optimize on our Malaysian talent. The EPU was given a mandate and was announced by Yama Burhormat Perdana Menteri last year in the budget 2013 to be a lead in the Graduate Employability Task Force. And towards that, it is the EPU that has then provided the allocation to fund programs such as the ICE program to ensure that we are able to bridge the gap, particularly from school to university. The EPU then has, obvious, has, has then entrusted the responsibility of coordinating the different programs down to Talent Corporation. At the end of the day, our role then is to find programs, particularly in collaboration with the industry and also the education ecosystem, which obviously includes universities and organizations like MAI, to ensure that we are best able to, one, meet the needs of industry by ensuring that our graduates, our young Malaysian talent, are able to meet their needs, but also at the same time to ensure that the investments that are being driven by METI ultimately benefits or creates opportunities that benefits our young Malaysian talent. In this respect, in order to, to address this critical skill gap, it is ICE that has a specific focus for the auto automotive sector. Talent Corporation on its part, perhaps we are more well known for engaging global talent, whether it's Malaysians abroad or foreign talent. We then recognize that our core and priority is really then to optimize on Malaysian talents. In this respect, the overwhelming majority of our allocation and focus is really on optimizing Malaysian talent, particularly young graduates. We then continue to look at programs such as ICE to at least be a short-term to medium-term intervention that can at least bridge the gap from what the university education system is, is producing to meet the industry needs and perhaps then towards a longer term, we hope to then work with relevant agencies to ensure that some of the content from programs such as this can then also be delegated or at least to be embedded into the curriculum of our education system, whether it's our universities or vocational institutes. The employment rate of the ICE, I think, is testimony to the program's success and at least shows the, the importance or the relevance of this training to the industry. And in this way, programs such as this, when it is then shown to work well, then at least we then have the credibility and have the proof that we can then engage with the education industry, the universities in particular, for such curriculum to be then embedded 
down at the university level. But last but not least, we must always then recognize the role of talent. And to this, I must congratulate all of the ICE trainees for your role in being a part of this journey because Malaysia will obviously not be a developed nation without your contribution, without your hard work and effort to ensure that the industry will succeed, particularly in transforming. You are the future and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam satu Malaysia. Yang bahagia oh, talented MC. Talented pengusi-pengusi majlis, pengacara-pengacara majlis. Ladies and gentlemen there. Yang bagi Datuk Majid uh, Kutani, pengarah uh, bagi industri ya, MITI. Yang semati Saudara Johan Mahmud Marikan, CEO Talent Corp Malaysia. Yang bagi Saudara Madani Jahari, CEO MAI juga semati saudara Lukman uh, Deputy Director of Human Capital uh, EPU uh, Yang semati juga all the captains of automotive industries uh, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you very much for this invitation. In fact, I have I was in a bit dilemma uh, this morning because I have two invitation. First is this, <laughs> and second the invitation from Madrid to join the dinner with. Uh, community business from Egypt. So I think at last I choose to join all of you, especially the engineers in this event. So let me begin by thanking to my, uh, so formally, and Talent Corp Malaysia for providing me the opportunity to, congrat uh, to congratulate and address our graduate engineers who have successfully completed the automotive, automotive Industry Certification Engineering Program or ICE. I was told that since its launch in August 2012, ICE has successfully Produced 254 graduate engineers, majority of whom went on to find employment within the automotive vendor community. This is heartening indeed. The employability of ICE graduate is proof that the program has been designed with industry, industry needs in mind. This is a program that continues to provide high level of high levels of competency to its graduates in response to the current the current demands of the automotive industry. The success of ICE is largely due to the collaboration between Talent Corp and MAI. Allow me to also take this opportunity to express my appreciation to most this organization for their efforts. Especially thanks also to EPU and the Prime Minister Departments for the financing, I was told, thank you again, for the financing, the program through Talent Corp. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia automotive industry is an important economic 
sector within our economy, which contributed 3.2% to the national GDP in 2012. That is among the reason on why our government continues to undertake efforts that will facilitate the growth of our automotive industry, with the latest of such efforts being our initiative to develop Malaysia as the regional hub for energy efficient vehicle EEV. This initiative is expected to create some 177,000 jobs by the year 2020 with an estimated 8,400 uh, 8, skilled engineers required to support the industry. There is now much greater challenge to produce such large numbers of skilled engineers within the next seven years. The demand for a skilled workforce, including professionals such as, such as engineers, is expected to grow worldwide, and this trend will also be projected at the domestic front. It is in this regard that programs such as IS assume a crucial role as IS not only needed to produce graduates who pass the necessary skills, but also consider the trend within the automotive industry in years to come and respond adequately to those future's needs by equipping their graduates with the right knowledge and skills set. At the juncture, I should perhaps stress that there is a distinction between producing engineering graduates and skilled engineers. I am rather certain that we would not have much of a problem in producing engineering graduates. More so now, we, the large number of universities that offer engineering programs. What is more crucial is to ensure that these engineering graduates have not only the knowledge, but skill and competency that respond to industry needs. On way of ensuring this is through training programs such as this ICE, as well as other related initiatives under the same program. An example that, say, that come to mind is the undergraduate automotive apprenticeship, which was launched by MAI in 2011 and serves to expose young engineers to actual industry experience, like all, the, all, all of you engineers. Malaysia has inherited some 30 years experience in the automotive industry. You can calculate the numbers and you can also measure the outcome. I, I, can, I can't comment much. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, look into it. Over the years, we have encountered many obstacles, learned our lesson, and move forward. These experiences are a must to be shared with our younger generation. In this regard, I would suggest that there be concerted efforts to transfer, transfer knowledge and skills and skill sets from the more experienced experience automotive manpower within the industry to the new automotive engineers and technicians. This would go a long way towards pro producing competitive manpower in the future. One of my responsibilities is to develop the human capital relevant for the automotive industry. Most of the training program implemented thus far 
were developed and customized, customized in consultation with the industry to fulfill the industry manpower needs. At this juncture, I must extend my appreciation to those companies that have rendered their support to my program and ensured their successful implementation. IS is one of those programs that were successfully implemented thanks largely to the cooperation of local automotive players. There are tremendous challenges ahead for our automotive industry. Changes in global market trends, stiffer regulation as a result of pressure from environmental lobbies, energy efficiency goals pursued by developed economies. These are all but a few examples of what the sector should expect in year to come. In order to remain competitive, our automotive industry must innovate, must innovate. We must create and nurture a culture of innovation, one that encourages creativity and thinking outside the box, as what always the uh, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister mentioned. As uh, graduates must be bold enough to do things differently and to question the norm as there is no longer any room or value in continuing on with our businesses as usual. Be bold, creative, and unique. Before I end my speech, allow me to once again congratulate us graduates on their successful completion of training program. Congratulations. There is a great demand of skill engineers. So what we are doing is we are trying to, we are trying to fulfill this demand by creating this first batch of 250 engineers. We design it along these components, um, these four variables, you know, of knowledge, skill, culture, and experience. For example, during a meeting with a supplier, with, uh, during meeting with a customer, I'm uh, very well prepared, and then I can uh, easily, uh, easy going with them. Uh, ICE have taught me a lot, uh, especially in. Lean Manufacturing, where I'm using Delmia, the Digital Enterprise Lean Manufacturing Interactive Application. Hands-on job, where I can play with various equipment so that I can visualise how the, how the pipe works. Even though they are already at the industry, they know that they need to continue acquiring knowledge uh, to substantiate the actual physical work that they are doing in the industry. Skills that we need when working in a manufacturing environment, firstly, leadership. Trainer, uh, teach me anything job that you have received from your boss, accept it and try to learn it. How to communicate with supplier in a proper way. To be competitive uh, in, in this era of uh, globalisation, it is about having the best quality, the, the most competitive course and able to deliver at the right time. A good knowledge and good experience to me to gain how to design the mold. Before this, I never know about the PS, the ISO, the technical, the OSHA. We need to have the strategic planning to fulfill the requirement of our work plan. Willing to absorb more knowledge and willing to, to contribute. And both of them have successfully presented that to the customer very well and the response from the customers also very good. Before they are joined, maybe they have uh, information from the ICE program regarding the automotive industry. We, we would like to have the employee who can really commit to the and align with our the goal and the direction to achieve our vision and mission, I think. In the years to come, we aim to produce 8,500 skilled engineers under the ICE program. My name is Nadira and I'm an ICE graduate. My name is Fahim. 
and I'm an ICE graduate. My name is Haja. I'm an ICE graduate. I'm Azima and I am an ICE graduate. I am Atika. I'm an ICE graduate.